everybody, I come again with new games. Today we're actually going to be going through a couple of replays that I have found and this should be hopefully pretty good. We have Unknown Desire, left position, he's going to be playing as Blue Cybran. Already putting down a land factory for his opener, that's what he's choosing to do. For the right side we have a green Aeon. And this is going to be played by SLE underscore CN. We'll be calling him SLE for this match and for the entire video. So, an Aeon versus Cybran match. Now, uh, usually Aeon is, is pretty powerful. Um, I don't really know about the other two factions. Although, I do know that the UAF uh, ACU is rather powerful. I think this might, might be the most powerful out of all three of them, but that means the Aeon one can teleport. So, I don't know. And they all have strikes and weaknesses. But yes, Unknown Desire. I know that Unknown is actually quite a good player. Um, so, you know, he's he, he at least knows what he's doing. Going three land factories. Um, he's going to be putting them near the water. I don't know. Um, I, I know that Aeon don't have any air sea units. But, you know, they can get some air and possibly get rid of that. That's quite close to the bridge. And so they can at least go quickly back into supporting fire if they were ever in danger and things. Um, going for energy is a bit of a problem here. You don't normally go for energy when you're in a PvP match. And um, I would I would say just do two energy and that will be it. Um, and then we've got the ACU here assisting building tanks. Um, now obviously the other engineers are making mass extractors so once they're done they should be coming down and making some more land factories because at the moment Unknown Desire does in fact have a uh, an advantage making all these land units and unfortunately I, uh, SLE will not be able to compete against this. Here comes an engineer, four loyalists, going to be driving these tanks away in the middle here but will be rejoined by another tank coming from the base. The ACU is going to join the in the party with a fifth loyalist and oh look at this micro! Four different loyalists targeting, targeting one of the NZ tanks. They're also moving as well to try and dodge the projectiles. That is exactly how you want to play Supreme Commander 2 when you're in the early game. That is a massive loss for SLE there. Three tanks gone, no units killed for Unknown Desire. And uh, SLE is bringing uh, the ACU forward. And uh, it's been also been escorted by units here. They're about to confront each other on this giant bridge. Here we are. Pum, pum, pum. And they both damage to each other, and obviously Unknown Desire knows exactly what they're doing, and uh, brings along an engineer. However, SLE not putting the ACU near any sort of land units. The tanks are quite far away, only now bringing them in, but they're still behind the ACU. The ACU is taking a ton of damage. Look at this, this is too ridiculous. This is not what you want to do, because now it's at a quarter health, and uh, it wouldn't take very much before the... Uh, opponent kills the a a a ACU, you know, all Unknown Desire needs to do at the very most is get unit detonate and swarm the ACU and boom, there you go, there goes the ACU, but I don't think he needs to do that, you know, if you're close to winning, why wait, that's kind of the mentality a lot of players have, including me, so here we go, we've got the Loyalists pushing forward with the ACU, the tanks are going down rather quickly, the ACU from SLE coming to push forward again, going to be hitting one of the few a Loyalists here, I don't know how she, if they have lost any units, in fact, yeah, okay, so Unknown has lost one Loyalist. Um, okay, yeah, one Loyalist. That is insane. Yenzu Tang's going down, look at that! That is insane! Not really picking the best targets here, two Loyalists dead, and here we are, almost at five minutes, and Unknown Desire has become victorious. That is insane! So, <laughs> I don't need to recap the mistakes here, but my goodness, that was that was a very bad first match, unfortunately. Uh, let's hope the second match will be any better. Uh, by the way, this was on the Skillion Coast, in case you didn't know. I never know if I actually uh, say the map name or not, because I'm in the zone when I'm beginning to cast and things. But yeah, this is the Skillion Coast. Now, for the next game, we're going to be going on to Arctic Refuge. Alright, here we are on Arctic Refuge, and today... I'm going to be on going on the second game of this video. Um, now, uh, what was it? What's your name? SLE is going to be changing to a UEF faction. Um, he's going to be 
going for a UAF commander and he's already putting down a land factory as you can see there unknown desire has already gone for an air factory but he's keeping the cyber faction supremacy and um, bloodline going and he's already getting a land factory to protect the air factory I think that is oh no it's an energy generator okay but it, it, it looks kind of similar when I was looking at it um, air, air units are going to be coming across the map here and here we go he's already still building Four energy generators. I don't know why. And there's an idle engineer here. You want to fix that, you know? Always make sure that these engineers have something to do. I mean, this one was trained out the factory. I can tell. But make sure this one has something to do. Send it over here or something. But uh, yeah, this is Arctic Refuge, by the way. Um, and as you've noticed, uh, both of these maps are 2v2 maps. And but people like to play on 2v2 maps when they're having a 1v1 match. It just makes it a lot, of, a lot more fun. Um, can't really say the same for Kane's Wrath though. Now comparing it, but yeah, you know they're both RTS games. But yeah, I suppose it's just because they play play extremely differently. But you know that's that's how it goes. Um, I just hope that SLE will be able to do a better job than he did last time. Although it doesn't all like it because he's using an ACU to build up a mass extractor, which isn't a bad play, but it isn't the best way to build or mass like that, he should use an engineer. Again, he's focusing on building more units, um, not sure about that at all, he's building way too many energy uh, stations there, and he's not dealing with the aircraft yet, he's not got any anti-air, which annoys me, because now he's just going to be, Unknown Desire is going to be seeing everything, and he's not been contested at all yet. Oh wait, is it? Yeah, there we go. There's the first anti-air unit at 2 minutes and 41 seconds of the match. And there's the second one coming out there. But he's now going to be dealing with that. But that's a huge amount of scouting information that he's gotten. And so, Unknown Desire now has a, a huge advantage because it's, SLE has not been scouting while Unknown Desire has. And it's taken SLE a long time before he has dealt with the aircraft that has been going over the base um, and that's terrible and he the SLE has not been scouting unknown desire and that's that's not where you want to be and so this is probably gonna look like a uh, but it doesn't look like Ross for SLE again I just hope it isn't because that'd be terrible but you know uh, I, that, that's all I'm that's all I'm reading right now it's, there are some mistakes that have happened um, what is this why why are you why are you building uh, why are you building an anti-air point defense in the middle of the map? Man, you're weird. <laughs> oh, you don't. You just don't. I mean, what if he had loads of air units? Which he'll have loads of ground units and stomp you. But if he had lots of air units, it wouldn't have mattered because that one point defense, it's an anti-air tower, but it'll call, I'll just call it an air point defense. That'll just be destroyed very quickly. And the ACU is also traveling without the companions of all these tanks and things so it can be easily sniped very unfortunate here doesn't look like he's actually going to win this to be fair no uh, no desire going for a fourth factory by the way I mean I don't know how much how many SLE has he has two so immediately he's going to be outnumbered and here we go um, we're going to be having these engineers try to you know, bloody convert each other. Um, they're going to be trying to hijack this mass extractor as well. Might be happening here as well. Yeah, there we go. But <laughs> it's just funny. Do it for the memes. <laughs> oh goodness me. But yeah, um, four land factories against two. You already know that this is going to be a loss. I just want to see how long SLE lasts before he dies. Because unfortunately, there's just a lot of things that he's done wrong. That's a nice fist, I must say. I don't know why I'm fantasizing over that, but that's a nice fist. But yeah, um, not a lot of ground units. He's focusing on building more mass at the moment. I wouldn't recommend building mass right close to the enemy base. And there's also artillery as well from from whatever that was. Maybe a tactical missile launcher. I don't know. But yeah, look at that. There's, that's artillery right there. That's going to be hitting the ACU. Right up. And it is going to be stopped now by loyalists. This is exactly what you don't want to do. The tanks, for some reason, are so far away 
I don't know what exactly he's wanting to do. Look at all these loyalists, they're just gonna come in and swarm the ACU. Look how quickly they just complete the health. It's already at half health. He's dead. He's just dead. Even with the tanks help now, they should have been there when the ACU was about to be attacked. Because they've had that time to travel, that extra damage has been put on. And now he's unknown desire, just made a fifth land factory. Absolutely no chance. There are loads of mistakes that SLE made. If you are watching SLE, um, if just say if you really want to be better in this game um, competitively, then please let someone know in the Discord. I'm sure they'll be able to help you. I might even be around, but if you don't, then that's fine. Um, but yeah, that was that was very sad. All the all these mistakes and things. Um, yeah, there's not really much to say about that apart from. Hopefully, if you understand why those mistakes were bad, then you, then that'll be great. I mean, if I talk if I talked a bit fast, then please let me know. But hopefully, I should have pointed out why those mistakes were bad. Also, by the way, before I go, um, one little message right there, and I just got sidetracked there. But anyway, I'll make it quick. Go subscribe to Night Miss Fortune, and I'm not saying that because of uh, because of Steel Speak saying that. I'm saying that. Because I actually looked at his channel, and he puts in an ungodly amount of work into it, right? He's only got 170 subscribers, but he treats every video like a professional um, event. It's, I mean, he, he, he runs events all year, every year for this game. And he has the help of some of his other clan mates, but he runs events, tournaments, and everything. There's going to be a February tournament that's going to happen this weekend. And there's also a, another one that's also, I think, happening right now. Um... But yeah, he's, he's doing events all year, every year, and he's fantastic, and he presents them in such a professional way. The amount of editing that goes into that is incredible. The thumbnails, pristine. Um, he talks English very well. I know he's not uh, actually uh, natively English, he's Russian, but he t talks English very well, I must admit. And his videos are very well presented. I, I have to congratulate him that, because he must spend hours and hours sat in front of his computer doing these videos and you must get tired of it um, honestly it, it's, it's brilliant i was my jaw dropped at the, the quality that came out of that channel honestly so go go look at his channel it's in the description pay some attention to what he makes because although it's this game it's not going to be that different but you know he, he's 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 got so he, his channel oozes professionalism and i think that's very essential for people who are wanting to organize events and things and, you know it, it's just nice to watch because here's this person taking their time out to do these this, these professional um, commentary videos and things and tournaments for this game that I don't even know are paid, but even if they aren't, they're still putting their time into it, and that's fantastic. So go and pay him a visit. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and uh, that'll be it for me, and I'll see you, hopefully, in the next one.